Hey, this is Malcolm341. In this video, we're going to look at some Maya modeling tips and tricks. So today we're going to look at show and hide edges in the 3D viewport on a hotkey, how to reveal the modeling toolkit custom shelf and drag buttons to it, and two ways to slide verts along edges. So let's get into it. OK, so here we go. So when you select the model, um, obviously it highlights and all the edges come up. And that's great. And if the model's deselected and you click this button here, uh, wireframe unshaded, you'll get edges on the model, whether it is selected or not. And when you select it, they'll turn green to show you that it's selected. Um, one thing that I'm just going to do here, um, you could solo this texture in the hypershade uh, to get rid of the lighting and just look at the diffuse so you can kind of see what's going on more clearly. But I'm going to show you a trick to do that. I'm just going to go to the create and I'm going to go to lights and I'm just going to make an ambient light. And in viewport 2.0, which is the default now, if you just uh, switch to lighting or press 7 on the keyboard, that's the same as pressing solo. So I just find that's a little bit easier if all you care about is looking at the diffuse texture. So I'm just going to turn off the wireframe here. And so maybe you're fixing a seam here or you're moving UVs and you just want to see the area between this. Uh, but when you have the model selected so you can do your UV selection. Hold on a second. I'm just going to go to Windows. Uh, where is it? Uh, modeling. UV editor. Oh, OK. This is going to be disgusting. So once again, put this on here. So let's say I'm trying to do some UV work here. I'm just going to shift right click and also turn off the toggle texture borders. And go to UVs. So where is that? It's down here-ish. Nope, it's not down there-ish. It's down here-ish. So let's say that I'm doing some work on these UVs here, and I'm moving them around. And I can't actually see what's happening because the edges are in the way. And there's a way to do this in Maya to hide these edges, but it's like 100 clicks deep. And you have to go into preferences each time. There's no button, like nice little toggle button like there is here. So I'm going to show you how we can uh, set that to a hotkey so we can toggle it on and off, which is really easy. So um, I'll just show you uh, the benefit of it here. So I've made mine onto F4 because that's what it is actually in 3D Studio Max. And I got used to that workflow a long time ago. So when I press F4, I can hide the edges and the model is still selected. So you can kind of see what's going on underneath. And this is a valuable tool to me that I've been using for my whole career pretty much. And if you tap F4 again, it turns it back on. So you can hide and show the edges of the model at any time. So to make the hotkey, uh, we just have to add ourselves a little custom hotkey and uh, paste some code into it that I'm going to share in the description. And so basically what we do is we go to Windows, Settings and Preferences, go to the hotkey editor, wait for this thing to load. I find this thing super wacky compared to the old hotkey editor. But if you're new to Maya, then uh, this is just the default style. Um, so I have my hotkeys here already set up. So what we'll do is just create a new um, set of hotkeys for the demonstration purposes of this video. So let me just switch back to the Maya default hotkeys. And then I'm just going to, whoops, I'm just going to duplicate this guy and give it a new name. So we'll call this whatever. YouTube just for fun. OK, cool. So we've got our uh, YouTube set here or whatever. And then what I like to do for my hotkeys so they don't get intermingled with these ones is I always put them into custom scripts. And you can see in the custom scripts, I already have a bunch of stuff here. So if you put them in custom scripts, then you're not accidentally going to like overwrite something. And you'll always be able to go back and find whatever hotkey um, that you have there. So what you want to do is go over here to the runtime commands, and we're going to click on new. And we have to give it a name. So we're going to call this uh, whatever, YouTube edges. And the description is going to be show and hide edges toggle. I think you have to fill out all these. It's going to go into the category custom scripts. I don't think you need a subcategory. It's going to be Mel. I'm just going to go down here. Uh, and then here's the code here. Select all of that code, copy that, and paste it into here. And save the runtime command. OK, great. And then we're going to put it onto a hotkey. So 
Here's the YouTube edges that we just did here. So click over to the right there to reveal the um, what hotkey. So like I said, I'm going to put it on F4 because uh, that's the one I like, but you guys can choose whatever key you, you prefer. So it's just going to say, do you want to overwrite your other one? And that's because um, I already have it assigned to F4. So for you, it'll probably say nothing. Um, so just say yes, sure. Take it from that one to this one. And do a save and close, and let's check it out. So I've got some vert selected or whatever UVs, and I press F4 on the keyboard, and it toggles my edges off, and I press it again, and it toggles it on. Super helpful. All right, the next thing that we're going to look at is how to reveal the MTK shelf or modeling toolkit shelf. So a lot of people have actually asked me about this, so I figure I would just throw it into a quick tutorial here. Uh, so when you've got a uh, default Maya set up, um, probably your interface looks similar to this. You've got the modeling toolkit here, probably the attribute editor, channel box, something, all these things down the right side. And you click these tabs to switch between them. This is the modeling toolkit, which has a bunch of options for modeling stuff. So what you can do, and then you've got your, sorry, you've got your shelf up here with all your various uh, different uh, things on it, Polygon, whatever, Arnold, all that stuff. Um, so I actually prefer... Uh, having my shelf here because I'll be modeling, modeling, modeling. Oh, select some verts, do some stuff here, blah, blah, blah. And then I don't really want to go up here. It's kind of awkward and it's not really close to where my right hand is or where I'm actually doing all the modeling stuff. So I find it easier to go right here to click uh, stuff. So what you can do, it's really simple. You just go down to the bottom of the modeling toolkit and see these dot, 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 dot here. You hover over it and it makes this icon and then you just click left click and drag up. And that actually brings up the custom shelf and you can kind of stack it uh, wherever you want. So you can see I've already got a bunch of stuff in my custom shelf and uh, how I actually prefer uh, to, to run the right side of my Maya is I actually like to see the channel box at all times because it has transforms in it. So I like to tear off the channel box and stick the channel box here on top of the MTK and then grab these lines and cover up the rest of the MTK and then pull the channel box down. So I've got doing some modeling here and then I want to just right click in here and see I can see my transform so I can see all my scale numbers here as I'm working and then I've got my shelf right here. So if I wanted to just jump into the mirror tool, I could click there and bring the mirror tool up or if I wanted to combine or do any of the actions here, they're all easily accessible here. So to add buttons to your custom shelf in the modeling toolkit section, you can select existing buttons here. So this is the normal map uh, baking stuff uh, from the other video tutorial. So what you want to do, you want to click and hold middle mouse button, and then a plus icon will appear. And so you can drag that to any shelf here. So you can drag it down there or whatever. But uh, you don't actually want to do that because that will delete the button from this shelf and move it to that shelf. So while you're holding middle mouse, you also want to hold down the Alt key, and then you get this little arrow icon, and that means it's going to copy it over uh, to this shelf. So I think you go to the far end there, and then just release middle mouse, and then the button goes there, and that's how you add buttons to it. Now, one thing I should mention, though, is that when you are in any of the shelves up here, and you right-click, and you say Edit, and it takes you to the code for that button, if you do that on this shelf, on the MTK shelf, it does not work and it takes you to a random button. So something to be aware of, if you're right clicking these and thinking that you're editing the code inside, you're actually messing up your buttons up here. Um, but uh, if you right click and you wanted to delete, that works fine. So that's how you add buttons to the MTK shelf. So the other cool thing about the MTK shelf is this is actually saved to the hard drive. So if you go to work or you go wherever, you get a new computer, uh, you can actually uh, take this shelf with you so you don't have to recreate it each time. In fact, what I've been doing with my main shelf and this shelf is I save them onto Google Drive. And so like when I go to work or whatever, when I get a new computer, then I can just re-download them from there. So I'll show you where this file is stored um, on the C drive. So just open up Windows Explorer. Go to your users, uh, your username, documents, Maya, and then go to 2018. And then you want to go to prefs. And then we are looking for right here, the MTK shelf.mel. So that will be uh, whatever is stored in here. So if you just copy that into this directory on any version of Maya, you'll get all of this stuff already pre-configured for you. And, and then I should also mention, make before you copy this file, make sure you close Maya because this shelf saves when you exit Maya. So if you've added 
20 buttons here or something, and then you just copy this file, they won't show up until you've closed Maya. So just making sure you do that first. Okay, and on to the edge slide uh, tricks. So uh, basically, uh, often I will want to move a vert, for example, along this edge without destroying the volume of this. And there's uh, two ways that you can do that. There's actually three ways you can do it, but the third one might not be that useful anymore because of the new tools. So the first one is super easy. Uh, just select a vert, and if you hold control and shift on the keyboard and middle mouse drag, it's going to slide along whatever kind of edge it's closest to. So I'll just go into a side view here so you can see that. Let me just undo that. So if we want to move this edge uh, along there, we can't do it by hand. But if we hold control and shift, and then just middle mouse drag in that general direction, you'll see it goes perfectly along that edge because the vert is constrained to that edge. And when it gets to the top, it's going to go along the other edge. And of course, that works with just the regular gizmos as well. So you just select a gizmo in the direction that you want to go and hold control and shift. And when you mouse over, you see it switches to the slide. So you know it's going to slide along that edge perfectly, slide down that edge. And so that one's a bit harder to do, slide along that edge. So that's method one. So method two is actually kind of a secret trick that uh, I don't know even know if it's documented anywhere, really. But uh, what you can do is say you've got your edge here. And uh, let's just select that guy. You've got your edge here, and you've got your slide trick there. But actually, before this tool was implemented, there was a way to do it in the older versions of Maya. And the trick for that was you would uh, hold down the C key on the keyboard to enter curve snapping mode. So you'd hold down C. And if you middle mouse right on the edge, the vert will start traveling along that edge if you hold the middle mouse down while you're holding C, and it'll constrain to that edge. So you can use that method if you prefer. Now, with this method, you can't switch edges mid kind of translation, uh, but it still works the same if you're going from edge to edge. And finally, we've got uh, the last trick here. So the problem with both the hold C and slide and uh, hold control shift and slide is that they only slide on the internal edges. So you'll see when it gets to the top here, it just gets stuck and then starts traveling along a different edge or whatever. Uh, so there's another trick there that you can do, which is select the vert and then um, hold D on the keyboard and hold V on the keyboard and then snap its pivot down to the uh, vert at the end of the edge that you want it to slide along. So you've basically moved your pivot down to there. Then enter the scale tool, and if you middle mouse drag or drag the yellow box to uniformly scale, the edge will now, sorry, the vert will now follow the edge all the way down, but it'll also go past and follow that trajectory as well. So you can see it goes all the way up and can escape the, uh, the constraints of the other two versions of the tool. And then I'll also show how those three things kind of work on a, a more complex uh, asset here. So go into edge mode and I'll show it on an edge instead of a vert because that kind of has a bit of a different kind of uh, feel to it or whatever. It creates kind of a different tool. So if you've got the edge selected and control shift to slide, this will slide both verts of the edge along the edges that they're coming into. So that's probably your best bet for kind of like a 3D shape or whatever. Then if you hold down C and do the middle mouse trick, you're going to get something like this. So see, it's going to take it where the pivot point was and slide it along that invisible edge. And then finally, if you do the DV trick and align the pivot there, it's going to go all screwy on this edge. But then this, this vert is going to translate along that existing or non-existing edge perfectly. So you can see what happens there. So probably stick with the new version the best because you can do cool stuff like this and it'll follow the edge perfectly. But there's some other tricks in there from the olden days, which I still use all the time. If you like this video and want to see more game art tips and tricks, please click the subscribe button. As usual, any links will be in the description. If you've got any questions, post them in the comments area. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have an incredible day.